z is x over y. Uh, so the question is, what's the density function? How do you compute the density function of z? So once again, we start with the distribution function. So f z z is probability of uh, z less than or equal to z. But z is given to be x over y less than or equal to z. So the question is, now what do you do? You may say, why not write it like this? But you know, this is an inequality. So what happens when you bring this y here? Anyone? It depends on the if y negative or positive. All right, so it depends on, it gets messed up. It gets, uh, depends on when y is negative or positive, right? I mean, right? Negative or if y is positive, of course, the equality will inequality will stay as it is. Y is negative, inequality will flip, right? So, and definitely, we, this is non-linear. We want to make it linear. Maybe it's easier to simplify it. So, what we see is that. Uh, so, one way to do this completely is. Uh, Yeah, there are two cases, obviously. So those two cases also, as you can see, forms a partition, because y is either positive or negative. So I can uh, write this. If you consider this to be an event A, I can write this as A intersection S. But that is A intersection uh, Yes, I'm going to write it that way. So that y positive or y negative. So this is like b, and this is b bar. <coughs> but uh, from, so this is probability of a intersection b union b bar. As you know, through distributive law, that comes out to be a b. And B and B, B complement are mutually exclusive. So what will be the next term? Probability of A, B, and uh, union A, B bar. So what is, the, in terms of probability? Huh? So it may be obvious to you, but let's use that and rewrite. So this reads, A is this one, x over y less than or equal to z. Uh, a, B, B is what? Y positive plus probability of x over y less than or equal to z, y negative. See, we went back to lecture one. That was uh, idea from lecture one. But look, now look at this easy, because when y is positive, this goes here. When, if y is given to be negative, this goes here, but in this split. So this is probability of x less than or equal to yz, y positive, plus probability of x greater than yz, y negative. So now all you need to do is find the region where these inequalities are satisfied and put it together. So this is x, this is y. First of all, x equal to y, z, how will that line go through? x equal to y, z. It will go through where? x equal to y, how will that be, x equal to y? I know, where, how, will the, how will the picture of the line look like? All right, so x equal to y, z will be? So it will be a line like this, right? So where is this region? Look at here. So literally, where is this region? X is less than YZ. Y greater than zero, so we are talking about here. And uh, X less than YZ is? So that's this region, okay. both this. And here, we, where is the region? Again, it's the same graph. This graph is X equal to YZ. This is x equal to y z. Depending on the value of z, this uh, slope will be uh, less than or greater than 1. Where is this region? Anyone? x is greater than y z, but y is negative. Below n? Yeah, very good. So this is the way you need to figure it out. So if you want, you can combine it and say, uh, 
at this point, so you are actually integrating here and uh, here. Uh, so remember, it's easy to figure this out uh, when you write it properly. So I'm going to write it as two integrals. So this is going to be one integral plus another integral. So let me, uh, let me do here, I, I, I'm going to take a strip like this. So x goes from infinity up to? So the inside integral is x goes from minus infinity up to yz. And outside integral? y goes from 0 to infinity. So this is dx dy. So let's do it here, dx dy. x goes from? Well, right, yz to infinity. And y goes from? All right, so that's the distribution function. Let's take the derivative of this. Uh, one more line is good. So please, even these problems, please practice out at home. So this is the distribution function. So the density function is, uh, so look here. Uh, let's do it here. So this is, the, the derivative will come here because these are constants. So derivative of this with respect to z is y. Then we substitute the limit. Remember, this integral is with respect to y. Wherever, where, I mean, this, indeg uh, this integral is with respect to so I rewrote it wrongly, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, this integral is with respect to x, right? Yeah. So wherever x is, you substitute yz. So y multiplied by this, and then look at the second term. It's a constant, so 0. Derivative of this with respect to c. Nothing, right? So the first term is z integral 0 to z y multiplied by fxy, yz comma y dy, plus let's see the other integral. Here, look at here. Again, these are constants, so the derivative is here. Der uh, derivative of yz with respect to z is y, but with a minus sign here. So minus y, uh, then this goes uh, where x is, right? So that's going to be exactly the same. So I hope you see this. So this is minus y multiplied by, and the third term is 0, et cetera. Minus infinity to 0. In this region, minus y will be what? In this region, minus y will be? No, no. Y is negative here, right? So minus y will be positive. In this region, Oh, y is positive, so y will be, of course, positive. So look, at this is positive, this is positive. Everything else is the same. So if you want, you can write it like this. I hope you see what I did. You see my logic? Because, because of that minus, I can combine and write it like this. All right, so let me do an example on this and see what happens. So once we are done on this, I'm going to. So the example is, uh, I'll do a simple example. X and Y are independent. Uh, 
uh, with, uh, let's say, normal random variables with variance uh, sigma squared. So f x y. Remember, look at the formula. I need the joint density function. So the joint density, if x and y are independent, the joint density function is? All right, so product. Each of them is given to be 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma squared. So this is 2 pi sigma squared e raised to minus x squared plus. When you multiply it is plus, so you get this. So we know the joint density function. So I am just going to take this and plug it in here. So you don't need any of this. We went through all this stuff. So in the book, a more general case is done. If x and y are jointly Gaussian, you'll get the same result, with, but with a different parameter. But let me just do this first. So I plug this in here. So you have FCC is minus infinity to plus infinity, absolute value of y, 1 over 2 pi sigma squared, e raised to minus, uh, instead of x, I'm going to put yz squared plus uh, y squared over 2 sigma squared. So look here, y is, uh, it's an even function of y, right? That's the first observation to simplify. Because this is y squared, y squared, this is absolute value of y. So it's even function, the integral will be two times the integral from, which is what I've done. Right? Once it is that, then I don't need absolute value, right? Because this region y is positive. I pulled out the constants outside. So this is now e raised to, so to, to so simplify, I'm going to call 1 plus z e squared or multiplied by y squared to be u. So 2y dy is du divided by 1 plus z e squared. That's a constant. And I'm going to bring the 2 also here. So you get this. So y dy is here. So this now reads 1 over pi sigma squared. And y dy is this quantity. This whole thing is, so this is integral. e raised to minus u du divided by divided by Yeah, yeah, there, I mean, you are not, uh, we also had two sigma squared. What happened to that? So that should be, so I'm going to put it here. Yeah, two sigma squared, by the time we came in, we forgot about it. So let me put the two sigma squared here. Take the derivative, you get y dy is a du. Uh, two, two cancels, one plus uh, c squared and uh, sigma squared, right? So sigma squared, one plus c squared. And what about the limits? Look here, when y goes to zero, u is zero. When y is infinity, u is infinity. Sigma squared cancels. So what do you get? Anybody? What do you get the answer to be? What is the answer to this integral? One. And what is this density function? Anyone? Okay. All right, so you have a theorem now. The ratio of two Gaussian random variables uh, with the zero mean is Cauchy. This is true even if they are not independent, but I just did independent. C goes from minus. Of course, C is the ratio. If x and y takes positive and negative values, Z also goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now go home and see the example in my notes or in the book where even if they are dependent Gaussian and with the different variances, you will still get Cauchy, uh, but with a different parameter, etc. cetera. 